Hi everyone and welcome to Play Today Online. This week's theme is In Like a Lion, Out Like a Lamb. And because it is March, we're starting to, well, despite the weather that we're experiencing, think about spring. And so that means talking a little bit about weather. In Like a Lion, Out Like a Lamb is a really great uh, opportunity to start to introduce some vocabulary um, surrounding weather and talking about some of the similarities and differences when specifically discussing in like a lion, out like a lamb. So we have that fierce weather and what, what does that mean? Um, and talking to the children about what they think uh, we would be talking about if we were talking about weather being like a lion. Is it windy and blustery, snowy and cold? And what sort of things are we perhaps thinking when we describe the weather as being like a lamb? Whether that's more gentle and calm and perhaps warmer, more still, for example. And really letting the children talk about what connotations or imagery comes to their mind when they're talking about lion-like weather and lamb-like weather. We have some great ways to sort of explore those differences today. These are a couple of the things that we're going to be making today. Um, later on in the video I just wanted to let you know that this is what's coming up. I'm going to walk you through a tutorial to make these. But first I wanted to share with you um, a cute activity that you can do um, using the concept of in like a lion, out like a lamb, but incorporating music and painting. So for this project, I'm not going to be able to show you exactly what I mean through a demonstration like I sometimes do with art projects, because this is something that is going to be very individualized and really you're looking for the children to use their creativity to create imagery um, that it goes along with the type of music that you're going to be playing. So you're going to be playing music that's lion-like. So, you know, loud music. Um, you can imagine some, some classical music that has a lot of, like, um, crashing cymbals or loud trumpets. It's something kind of almost majestic sounding perhaps. And so the children are going to have to listen to that music and while they're listening to it they can paint a painting. And they're going to use colors that they think go along with that feeling of that lion-like sound, that fierceness, that majesticness. And they're also going to paint accordingly. Okay, they might be using wild brush strokes, things like that, or they might not. It's how, however they choose to interpret the music. Once they're finished with that, you might even go away and do something else and then come back with a new clean sheet of paper. And now you'll be playing some lamb-like music, some calm, maybe more serene music. And how do they paint like that music? What sort of images come to mind? How are they going to be brushing a little bit differently? What colors are they going to be using? Are they going to be using different colors than they did the first time? And these aren't things you necessarily need to discuss in advance. It might even be something that you discuss after the fact with them. Like, how did their choices vary from picture to picture dependent on the music they were listening to? You may also, you know, provide them a little bit of guidance in the beginning, of course, that they will be painting to go along with the music and, and maybe get some ideas generated as a group first before you, you go off to, to your individual paintings, that sort of thing. So that is a fun way to explore um, the in like a line, out like a lamb, but in a, a, a musical and art sort of format. So no doubt when you're talking about whether that's fierce or lion-like, um, you're going to end up talking about the wind. And when you're talking about whether that's a bit more gentle and more lamb-like, um, 
you're probably going to be thinking of warmer weather, more sun. So what I have here is a cute story. I'm going to be reading it, so I'll be looking down here. And it's uh, Aesop's um, Fable. And I will have this story transcribed on the website if you're interested. Anyways, the story is called The North Wind and the Sun. The North Wind boasted of great strength. The sun argued that there was great power in gentleness. We shall have a contest, said the sun. Far below, a man traveled a winding road. He was wearing a warm winter coat. As a test of strength, said the sun, let us see which of us can take the coat off that man. It will be quite simple for me to force him to remove his coat, bragged the wind. The wind blew so hard the birds clung to their trees. The world was filled with dust and leaves. But the harder the wind blew down the road, the tighter the shivering man clung to his coat. Then the sun came out from behind a cloud. Sun warmed the air and the frosty ground. The man on the road unbuttoned his coat. The sun grew slowly brighter and brighter. Soon the man felt so hot he took off his coat and he sat down in a shady spot. How did you do that? said the wind. It was easy, said the sun. I lit the day through gentleness. I got my way. So I think that's a really cute fable um, that does reiterate the fierce like the wind and the gentle like the sun but it goes further to say that just because something's fierce and seems um, to be you know impressive or intimidating doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be more effective than something that's a little bit more gentle a little bit more quiet um, in, in regard to accomplishing something So let's start with the lion. Super easy projects. Um, you can have some of these things ready in advance as far as having these, the nose and mouth cut out um, in advance. Even having, you know, these um, oval faces cut out in advance. One of the things that is really fun for kids to do is create this fringe. So what, what we've done here, I'll just break it down. We have a yellow piece of cardboard that has been cut into a circle and this you could probably even just find yellow plates at say a dollar store or something or maybe you have some um, bristol board or something of a heavier cardstock that you can use then you're going to have a smaller circle of construction paper um, uh, of orange and this is a again fun for children to create this fringe. There is a trick to having it done um, correctly. So you'll have the circle already cut for them and it's best to have some sort of template. So for example, um, this one has a little bit of glue on it, but you can see that there is a circle that I've drawn in the middle here because it shows that you don't keep cutting, you do have to stop at a certain point. Otherwise it doesn't create fringe. And this is something that um, will help direct the kids to just snip until a certain point all the way around. So that's something that you might want to consider if, when you're setting the kids up to do this is um, drawing this inner circle here to help guide their, their fringing. Um, but when that's all cut out, it would get glued on to the original yellow circle or yellow plate. And then you'd have a yellow face that you would glue on. Again, this is one you might cut up in advance or perhaps you have um, the children cut it out. Adding the smile with the nose, googly eyes, some ears. And then this is the really fun part is the clothespins that you can have the kids paint yellow and then they stick on and they actually act as legs so it will stand for you there now I'll show you the lamb it's 
So again, we started with a, a circle. Same idea, use a hard card, um, cardboard or uh, plate. And then this one, there's no fringe. Instead, we're using these cotton balls to go all around the outside. I think it's probably easiest to paste the face on first, this black piece of cardboard or um, construction paper. And then the kids know they have a guide of sort of where those cotton balls should be placed. And then again, some googly eyes. This time, the clothes pins have been painted black. And one of the things, if, you, if you're working with a lot of children, you can see that the faces are similar shapes. So you can use the sem same template. You may as well make it easy on yourself. Although the one that I have here had, you know, ears, you may as well, if, if you're, again, working with a lot of kids and you're gonna have to cut out a lot of these, use the same template because it's basically the same, the same shape. But there you have it. Um, at the end, the children will each have their very own lion and lamb. Now another thing that I would suggest is to keep track of the weather throughout the month on a calendar. And you may already have one of these set up, um, but what you would want is something, some way to track each day in terms of whether it was a more lion-like weather day or a more lamb-like weather day. So that might mean, you know, if you have lion or lamb stickers, you could use those. If you want to be more specific in how the weather is being tracked, you can yeah, have something that will show wind versus sun versus, you know, snow, etc. And so whatever method that you use throughout the week, for example, the first week to track, at the end of the week, you can discuss with the children. So what do we think? Did the, um, did the month of March come in more like a lion or more like a lamb? Were there more days that were lion-like or more days that were lamb-like? And you continue this process, if you like, throughout the month so that you can determine how the month ended. Did we go out like a lion or did we go out like a lamb? And so it's a fun way to start tracking the weather if that's not something that you already do as far as what's it like out today, what sort of weather are we experiencing, but putting it in terms of the lion and the lamb. So thanks again for joining us and hopefully we will see you again next week. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe on our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and visit our blog that contains a lot more information at www.playtodayonline.blogspot.ca. See you next time.